Shalom, shalom, Mosiah Christ bless you. My name is Officer Elijah, and with the Organization of Israel United in Christ. That's right. And we're here to show you so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics who you really are according to the Bible. Bring it out. Now, the purpose of that is we are here to stop yes, the yes, crime in our community. That's right. We're here to unite us as one people. Right. All right? And we're going to start out with showing you who you are, okay? Remember, I started, I asked every single last one of y'all, if you were to tell me what your race was, what would you tell me? And I got like human, black, mixed, African-American, all these different things, right? But we're going to show you what you are according to, according to the Bible. I'm going to read to you a prophecy that we would not know who we are in the last days. Y'all didn't know we we're living in the last days, all right? Watch this. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Come on. The ox knows its own. The ox, which is an animal, a mammal, right? Which is an animal. Read on. And the ass is master's crib. Uh-huh. But Israel. But who? But Israel. I asked you, hey, brother, what would you tell me your race is? For real? Yeah. Your race. African American. I hear human. I heard African American. I hear black. I heard mammal. So many different answers, right? But that goes to show you that this prophecy is true. Read it again. The ox knows his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. These animals, they know where they come from. If a dog leaves outside his house, guess what? That dog gonna know where to come back home, right? Home. Come right, but read on. But Israel! But who? But Israel! You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read, does not know. My people does not consider. We don't know who we, where we come from who we are, right. what's our history. Right. We don't know these things, why? Because these things were stripped away from us through slavery. Right. Right. These things were taken away from us by the people who hate you. So we're here to show you your identity today. And why does that matter? Because we have a lot of crime in Virginia Beach. We have a lot of hatred in Virginia Beach. We have a lot of murder in Virginia Beach. Right. And the reason why that is because we don't have a purpose in life. Right. We don't know who we are. So we had to show you that according to the Bible. Bring it up. But first, I'm going to start out with the greatest man that ever lived. We're going to show you his nationality. And I'm going to, there we go, who? We're going to show you who he was according to the Bible. Get Bring it out. Revelation chapter 1. Now, I bet you're wondering, why does nationality matter? In the word nationality, you are a nation. You are a nation. The blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans are divided. There is no nation within those, within those people. Right. There's a nation within the so-called white race. There's a nation within the so-called Arab race. Right. But why is there, any matter of fact, drop that, give me Zephaniah, give me that. Why is there no unity or nation within the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Because the people who told you your history and told you that you are a mammal, an African American, a black, a human being, they don't want you knowing that you are God's children, the Israelites. That's right. 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 And another one of those results from that is that we go into Christianity, we go into Islam trying to find nationality, trying to find purpose. And that's why you see that thing around your neck right there? That cross? We're going to get into that. That's why we go into idolatry. Right. Because we don't know where we belong. These are my grandchildren. Oh, These are my children. Okay, These all praises. All praises. Good. Good. So we're going to show you who we are according to the Bible. But first we have to do this. Read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. We will. Gather yourselves together. Do we not know how to gather together? Y'all gather together right now. Black people know how to gather together. Whether it's to party, to do drugs, to drink together, we know how to do evil. We right. know how to gather together for evil, right. but that's not what God is talking about. That's right. Read on. Yay. Gather together, oh nation, not desired. What nation is not desired other than the so-called blacks? What nation is hated wherever they go on this planet Earth? Bring it out. Aliens. What? What you, what you say? Did you say aliens? What do you say? What nation on this earth, no matter where they go, they're despised? 
Humans? What would you say? Blacks. Blacks. That's he is true. absolutely correct. Blacks. Everywhere we go on this earth, there's a byword or a negative word or slang used against the black man. That's right. Whether it's nigga, whether it's uh, whatever, we have a disrespectful term against us everywhere we go. Right. Hispanics too, and Native Americans. Right. The Bible says for what? Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desired. Now I said we know how to gather together. We gather together in Christianity. We gather together in Islam, but what is the result of that? We still hate each other. Right. There's still crime and murder in our community. Right. But, but if that is the truth, and that's what's supposed to unify us, why are we still separate? Why are we still separate? Because guess what? That's not the way. That's not what God wants you to unite under. He wants you to unite as the Israelites. That's right. Right? right? So I'm going to show you something. Now give me revelation. We have to gather together under something, which is God's laws. We're right. going to show you God's laws today before we leave. We're going to set this place in order before we leave. That's right. All right? But first, we have to establish nationality. First, we're going to start out with the greatest man or whoever touched the face of this earth in his nation. Read it out. Read what you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Christ. Right. Now the ask the question is asked, why does it matter what color he is? My question to you is, my question to you is, if he was truly white, would it matter? Would it matter? Would it matter? I'm gonna show you it does matter because they changed his image. And what comes with an image being changed? The gospel. I'm going to show you why. Let me ask you a question. Remember when Obama was running for president? Remember when Obama was running for president? Why did we vote for Obama? Keep it a stat. Why did we vote for Obama? Read it up. If color didn't matter, why did we vote for Obama? Because color does matter. That's right. Color matters. Now, what comes with that is a message. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His hand and his hands were wet like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were the flame of fire. If color didn't matter, why did your slave master change what your God looked like? That's right. And that's why you hate your brother. That's why you hate your brother. They know that if they change the image of the greatest man on the face of this earth, it's going to destroy the black nation. If color didn't matter. Read it again. His head and his hands were white like wool. As white as snow. And his eyes was a flame of fire. And his feet like it's a fine brass. Who's seen what a penny looks like? Y'all know what a penny? What does a penny look like? Now, I'm going to show you how simple this is. Give me the simplicity in Christ. 2 Corinthians 11. It's what color? What color is, a, what you, what color is brass, my brother? You know what brass looks like? Yeah. Green. Almost like copper, right? My sister, would you agree the same thing? Like a copper color? My brother, you agree the same thing? Like a copper, right? It's, and right, it's but a copper is a dark color. Right. It's a dark color, right? right? Now, go back. No, oh, you still on Revelation? Now, I'm going to show you what happens. Let me ask you a question. If I burn anything, what color is it going to turn? Black. What color? Black. 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 What color? Black. What color? Black. I got these out. Following on so I can show and see that y'all paying attention. Black, right? Black. Watch this. Read. And his feet like a fine brass. The Bible says Christ's feet was like a fine brass. Right. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. Oh, oh, it's like they what? Burn in a furnace. So you got already a dark color and then you're burning it, it turns black. Christ was a very black man. That's uh, right. Middle Eastern, not a uh, Caucasian. Christ was a very black man, all right? So what are we doing? We're trying to show you and establish a vision because the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. And how do we perish today? Not 
not knowing who we are. Yes, We're doing everything that we want except for loving each other. Right. So we have to establish love back in our community. Right. We have to establish that. We have to gather together and establish love. But we're going to show you what love is in a second. But I have to show you imagery. I have to show you you in the Bible. Right. Who's seen the book of Clarence? Raise your hand. Y'all anybody seen the book of Clarence? Y'all seen the, y'all ain't seen the book of Clarence? Come on now. That movie is talking. There's so much controversy behind that movie. But you know what? You know why there was controversy behind that movie? Because that movie used all black figures. Why are we talking about black figures and the Bible? Because guess what? These are your forefathers and foremothers. That's right. Give me Job 8 and 8 real quick. These are your forefathers and foremothers, sister. Did you know that? When you think of the Bible, you open the Bible, you read the Bible, right? The general consensus of thought is these are Caucasian people. These are Caucasian, right? Because this image right here, on this sign right here, what we were taught as Jesus and what his people look like, we don't think of black people. We don't think of ourselves. And when you separate a people, you separate your God. If our God, usually every nation on this earth, their God looks just like them. So now you have every race on this earth worshiping a God that looks just like them. But what is the blacks worship? Jesus. What is the Spanish? Jesus Cristo. But what does he look like? What was he painted by the people that oppress you and destroy you every day? Them. Them. So you cannot see greatness in yourself. So that's why we're reestablishing imagery. Read what you got. The book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. I'm trying to show my brother why color does matter. Because what comes with color, an image. An image comes with the color. We're going to show y'all the right image according to the Bible. Read what you got. For choir, I pray thee. For, for, read again. For choir, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their father. The Bible says to prepare yourself for the search of your father. I don't know about y'all, but I can't go back further than my grandfather. Right. Can you, sis? Can you, brother? Can you, sis? Can you, is you sis, brother? Sis? Okay, can you, can you, like, in the black community, the furthest we can go back is our grandparents. You ask anybody else, they were my great, great grandfather, Charles, this and that. The Bible says to go back and search and acquire your family. This Bible is your family. That's right. These are your people inside of this book. Right. I just showed you that Jesus the Christ was a black man. That's right. And then guess what? The promise that you have today, whether you walk outside or wondering if a brother that looks just like me is going to murder me. Yes, sir. I don't care about the murder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, we're going over there. All right. Yeah, read it again. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. Read. For choir, I pray thee of the former age. choir, I pray thee of the former age. When you go into the past, look for your forefathers. Read. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So is your father. Jesus the Christ okay, is your father. Jeremiah, Isaiah, King David, King Solomon. Right. These are your fathers. Jeez. The greatest men that ever touched the face of the earth is your forefathers. Right. Y'all are not niggas. Right. Y'all are not spinks. Right. Y'all are royalty on this earth. Right. And you have to come back to your royalty. Right. So, uh, now go back to... Go back to... The, Right. Yeah, go back to Revelation. So say, oh yeah, well, we're gonna show you love. We're gonna show you love. We're gonna show this community what love is. All right. Read what you got. The book of First John, chapter five and verse three. Y'all it up because the Bible tells you and it defines itself. I say, I love you, brother. Or your God tells you, are you are you old, you bro? How old? You 21, right? We tell each other that we love each other, right? So, love is an action. How do I show that I love you? With my action. Right. That's how I show how I love you. We're going to show you what love is according to the Bible. Read what you got. First John chapter 5 and verse 3. Read what you got. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. If I say I love you, my brother, I have to show you in deed and in action, not just words. Right? Right? Read on. That we keep his commandments. That we what? Keep his commandments. The love of God is 
if we keep his commandments. Right. Right. That's how you love him. Now, how do we show we, how do we show how do we show that we love each other? Leviticus chapter 19. Because if I say if I love you, bro, I'm gonna look out for you. I'm gonna tell you what you're doing wrong because I'm not gonna allow you to go out here and get yourself killed. Right. I'm not gonna do that. That's what real love is. You say you got grandchildren, right? Yeah, all your grandchildren, right? You love if your grandchildren went off and did something wrong with them, what you gonna do with them? So which is what? You're going to correct them. Right. You're going to correct them, right? And that's what we come out here to do because we love our people. Yes, right. Read to God. Now book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You my brother. What's your name, bro? Marlo. 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 My name is Elijah. All right? So if you love your brother, what you going to do? Read again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Come on. Thou shalt not any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You got to do what? Rebuke no. thy neighbor. Rebuke goes into correction. Right. That's what it is. I'm not going to let you go out in the middle of the street and a car is coming. I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong, whether you like it or not. Why? Because I love you. Right. right. That's what true love is, and we have to establish that true love, all right? So we're going to show Virginia Beach true love. Love. Right. We're gonna start out with give me some laws. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The most common matter of fact, yeah, give me that one. The most common we'll start out with basic but easy to understand laws of God. Because this is correction and this is love. Right. And this is how we're going to clean up our communities. That's this right. is how we're going to stop the the crime and stop the murder and stop the fornication and stop the adultery. That's right. Right. Read what you got. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22 and verse 5. Marlo, you listening? Marlo, you listening? You listening, Marlo? Come on, I'm dealing with you, my brother. Watch, come, come on. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The Bible says, the woman. Sis, you a woman, right? Read what you got. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. And this said, the Bible says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. What is something that women or girls wear today that pertain to men? It's hard to take the kid. It's hard to take the kid. I'm asking you. I'm asking the girls. The girls raise their hand. Your girl raise their hand. Your girl raise her hand. I'm a man. Huh? You a what? Your girl raise her hand. She said she a man. She I'm not Oh, God. Oh, okay. All right, good, good, good. All right, so here's my question for y'all. Here's my question. Read it again from the top. We're going to answer the 22 by 5. You got to hear me? No. Read what you got. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. The women raise our hand again. Women raise their hand again. Now, since I'm gonna ask you, what is something that women wear today that belong to me? That's right. Do I they box? Give me more. On the outside. Yo! Yo! What'd you say? No, you was the first thing. What did you say, sis? On the outside. What? That's more so on the inside. What about outside? T-shirt. Give me more. Come on, sis. What is it? What? What? No, no, no. Say it again. Pants. Pants. The Bible says the woman should not be wearing pants. Oh, yeah. The woman should not wear that was pretending to a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. If y'all see me walking outside with a dress on, would you think that's normal? No. If y'all see me walking outside, y'all see me teaching with a dress on, would y'all think that's normal? Yes. Yes. This is what? Yes. That's what? Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. 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 So the same way it looks weird for a man right. to be wearing a dress, so in the same way when a woman is wearing pants. Right. God says, read it again. Read it again. For all that do so, for what? For all that do so, for abomination to the Lord thy God. All right, I'm going to show y'all who knows what abomination is. Who knows what abomination is? Who knows what abomination is? Say it again, sir. Okay, what is abomination? Who knows what abomination is? 
Oh, you do what? That's a ball out the field. You said ball, that's a ball. All right, I'm going to help y'all out. I'm going to help y'all out. If I spit into a bowl, Ow! and I, 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 I take the bowl to each one of y'all say drink it, is that, is that, is that? Can you go drink it first? No, it's no, that's, that's, that's what? It's trifling. It's nasty, right? That's the same way God looks at when we are cross-dressed. That's right. That's right. And the man's going, y'all paying attention? Are y'all paying attention? I want y'all to get this because I want y'all to learn. Because I want y'all to get right with God. That's right. 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 Now, you love God? Raise your hand you love God. Raise your hand you love God. First time. Right. You know what I want. Uh, raise your hand. No, first time. Uh, uh, I just went to church today. I went to church today. Keep your hands raised up. Who said they love God? Me, I went to church what God says how to love him. God has a way for y'all to love him. Watch this. Look what you got. Chapter 14 and verse 15. You know, if you love me. Y'all love, who said they love God? Raise your hand. I went to church. Okay. All right, read. Go to church. Keep my commandments. God said do what? If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, what we just showed y'all back in Deuteronomy was a commandment of God. God's telling you to do something. Did your parents tell you to do something all the time? Yes. Don't your parents tell you to do yes. something all the time? Yes. Right. Sis, you have kids? Sis, sis, you have kids? Yeah, for sure. You tell your kids on, to do things, to right? Go. And you expect them yeah, to do it. Go, but this is your parent, right? No, her sister. Are you going to disrespect your parents? Are you going to disobey your parents? Yeah. God is our father. Right. We're on the same way that he tells us to do things, we have to do it. That's God right. says women do not wear pants if you love them. Now, if you do, if you don't do what God says. Does that mean you love him? Wait, wait. So we can't wear pants? No. Whoa. No. No. What? No. 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 You know why? Nasty. You know why, sis? Let me go home. You know why? How, you know how why? can't wear pants? You ever heard the saying, who wears the pants wins the relationship? I don't care. So when y'all are wearing pants, do you want to be a boy? Do you want to be a boy? Yes, I just wear pants. I can't wear. You said what? You want me to wear pants? You want me to wear dress? You, you know what the slaves are? You know what you heard of slaves? We're not back no. Did you know that they would? <laughs> what did the slaves do all the? What did they have to do all the time? Lift them. Lift them. By, by, no. If they didn't do what? Yeah. Obey. Obey what? So what is the job that a slave did? They pick cotton, right? That's Guess what? Right, your forefathers and foremothers, your foremothers were picking cotton in a dress when it was cold. When it was cold, right? So it's no, I'm telling you, it's no excuse. Now you can wear things underneath your dress, right? Since you can wear things underneath your dress, right, to keep you warm, but God says do not. Wear oh, hands, all right? If you put your hands, spare it on you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to do things in order. We're going to do things in order. Now, sis, do you agree with that? Oh, all right, I'm going to show you something else. Sis, are you married? I got you, I got you. Are you married? All right, so. Are you, are you having sex? I can't. <laughs> Sis, I gotta, I gotta cut it real with you because God has laws that we have to keep. We have to keep God's laws. There's something that's wrong with Virginia Beach. There's STDs. And that stems from what? Women and men having unmarried sex. That's what happened. God says that's a judgment. That's a judgment for that happening. I know it's young kids around, but we have to live in the problems of our community. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? All right, good. Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Now, when you're married, sis, when you're married, your husband has to lead you. Sis, what's your name? What's your name, Eli? Eli. My name is Eli, so Eli too. You married, sis? No. All right. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Say, so you dealing with something? You have, a, you have a man that you're dealing with? I don't deal with no men. You dealing with, do you deal with women? Yes, I do. All right, now, according to the Bible, according I know to what God, the Bible means. it's I wrong, it. sis. It's wrong. I am you know, one good. of God's children. You cannot be a homosexual, sis. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. You're going to die, sis, but we're trying to save you, sis. That's we right. love you. That's right. Read to God. Hebrews chapter 13, hey, verse 4. Read it out. Marriage is honorable and all. Marriage is honorable. Sis, you hear what the Bible says? She said, it says, what? Read it again. Hey, Marriage is honorable and all. Sis, one day, don't you want to be married? Not, sis. I do. 
Yeah. I'm saying little I girls. I'm still dressing little ones. I want to be you married. Be married? Yep. Good. You want to one day get married, right? What? Yes. Married. You know what it means to be married? Yes, I do. One day get married. Oh God. I'll <laughs> get married to a healthy man. One day man. you want to be married, right? Good. I'm gonna get married to a healthy man. Marriage is honorable enough. No, no, no. In the bed, undefined. God says once you are married, what you do in behind closed doors is good. Read on. But hormones, but what? But hormones, read. And adulterers. And adulterers. Homosexuality is fornication, which falls under adultery. What did God would do with adulterers? Read. God will judge. You know how God judges the community with homosexuals? And unmarried women and unmarried men, STDs. Right. Single parent households. Right. You know how many kids are out here? I don't see a lot of adults out. We pulled out. It's nothing but kids out here. Right. It's nothing but kids out here. See. I'm gonna show you something. Give me Nahum. Hold that. Give me Nahum chapter three and verse thirteen. I want to show you that this Bible is real. God says it's nothing but children and women in the midst of us. What a minute! Well, the men are supposed to be out here raising up the communities and stuff. Right. right. Raising right. these young men, right. raising their households. But today, the woman, the black woman, is left to lead the household. Right. right. And we're here to show you that that's out of order with God. Yes. Right. Read what you got. Right. Nahum chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Nahum chapter 3, and verse 13. Read so us. what the Bible says. Read. Behold, the people in the midst of thee are women. Are what? Women. Are what? Women. God said there's nothing but women left in the midst of you. Why? Right. Because all the men are not in the household. Right. Because of unmarried couples. Right. right. Unmarried households. And guess what? It's set up like that from earlier when I was telling you to keep the household and the blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans divided. Right. So that they don't come back knowing that they're the Israelites. Sis, do you go to church? You don't go to church? Good, good. I'm glad you don't. Because they're not going to teach you who you are according to the Bible. I used to go to church. Right. You used to? But I can't go no more. I'm glad you don't go no more. Because they're not going to teach you who you are. They're not going to show you. Matter of fact, you need to run this and your church. They're not going to show you this in the Bible. They don't teach us about Bible. They don't do what? Damn. Teach us about Bible. Oh. Damn, whoa. Oh. They don't teach us about Bible. Matter of fact. Not a she just said they don't teach the Bible. Guess what? Right. The Bible tells us that. No, she ain't lying. She because she, she tell the truth. Why? Because right. you would know if you're the Israelites. Right. If they were teaching the Bible. Right. You would know that women are not supposed to be wearing pants. That's right. right. You would know these things. You would know that you're supposed to get married before you carry. That's right. You're not supposed things. to be a homosexual. You are not That's supposed right. to be a homosexual right. if they taught the Bible in church. Watch this. Malachi 2 and 7. The book of Malachi. Chapter 2 and verse 7. Read on, read on. For the priest's lips. Your pastor is supposed to be the priest. And what's supposed to be on his lips? Read. Should keep knowledge. And should keep knowledge. What is that knowledge? Read. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. The what? The law. The law. Because right now, look around what you see, sis. You see other sisters out here wearing pants. That's going to show you that the church has failed us. That's right. They right. don't teach God's law. Right. They don't. Right. You can walk. Say it again. Girls can wear pants. Who told you that? Who told you that? I know who told you that. The Christian church told you that. That's right. right. That told you that. Yes, they did. No, yes, sir, because God not. said don't wear pants. That's right. right. That's what God says. <laughs> Since did, did, did we pull that information out of any other book? No. That women are not supposed to be. We reading the Bible. That's what we reading. What is the nation? <laughs> the nation is men leading by example. Oh, my.